Jonathan, I've spoken with a couple folks back in Salem, New Jersey, and it's clear what they think of you. I'm just curious, what does your story do for folks back home? Um, really, uh, like you said, you, you spoke to people back home, and I'm pretty sure you can probably tell how it's like a tight-knit, small town, so everyone knows everybody. So I just want to you know, thank them you know, for continuing to support me. I'm pretty sure you could probably feel it as well. I mean, you know, like I said, it's a small town. So when, when a guy from a small town like that, you know, has the opportunity to, you know, play and, you know, the highest level of football, it, it's a big deal. And, you know, I just want to put my best foot forward and, you know, continue to do my best for those people back home who do support me. Just a quick follow up. What were the odds for you growing up of getting to where you are today? How, how tall was that peak, so to speak? It is definitely, it's definitely slim. I mean, there are a lot of guys back home who had a lot of talent, but there are a lot of things back home that could, you know, get guys distracted or, um, you know, send them on the wrong path. So it's, it takes a lot of hard discipline and hard work in order to, you know, stay on that path. And, you know, I think it was just the support of my family and um, close friends back home that kept me on that straight path. And you know, I just want to continue to keep taking that path. Thank you very much. Phil B. Yeah, Jonathan, thank you for your time. Um, you've struck all of us uh, with your enthusiasm and how fired up you are and excited. I'm wondering how long today before the smile got off your face and you were down to business or, or do you can't help it? Your first day practicing in pads, you're so excited. You're smiling all the way through it darn near. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely smiling through it, um, you know, especially during warm-ups. It's just the beginning, you know, really before you get into the meet and think of things. Um, and then as practice goes on, uh, you realize you, you got to have a focus. And then the smile kicks back on after the play. But, you know, every single play, you got to go in with a, with a focus and a mentality in order to be able to perform at a high level. Uh, and, uh, you know, once that play is over, I mean, you just think about how much fun you had on that last play. And then when the next play rolls around, it's time to lock back in again. Zach Kiefer. Jonathan, I would assume over the last couple of weeks or even today was one of the first times you've been able to take a handoff behind the offensive line and really see it and feel it. Today was the first time in pads. What was that like? Oh, it was awesome. I mean, and one of the biggest things is those guys are going to work for you up front. So the way you're able to just let those blocks develop, let those guys, you know, do their job and let them do it well. Uh, they enjoy and love doing it, and they love doing it well. So whenever you get behind a group like that that enjoys doing their job and enjoys doing it well and does it at a high level, I mean, it makes your job that much more easier. But then it also makes you want to go that much more harder because you know that those guys are working hard up front in order to create those lanes for you. Uh, Stephen Holder. Hey, Jonathan. Um, you know, everybody talks – a lot about your speed, which is real, but, but you're a big, big guy. And I, I wonder just, can you tell me just how much do you embrace the physicality and the physical part of this game, which is, you know, so important at your position? Oh, I, I embrace it a lot. I mean, you know, our coaches have always told me the best player on defense is the guy who's, you know, moving the chains. He's laying down across the first chain uh, down marker. So I'm always a guy who embraces, you know, keeping the chains moving. And in order to do that, you have to be physical. You have to be willing to grind out some yards. Sometimes you're going to be able to just hit a big one. But I think, you know, being able to play in between the tackles is, is a huge deal. And I take pride in that. Well, Eric's. Now that you're here, what's it been like kind of uh, building a relationship with Marlon Mack? It's been fun. I mean, he's uh, I mean, he's from Florida, so um, a lot of I had a lot of Florida guys on my team back at Wisconsin, so they're usually always funny, but um, kind of a, a funny, not making jokes, but you know, they're just you know, cool, mellow guys who you know just and, and love love and enjoy life. So being able to connect with Marlon, asking him questions, picking his brain about the games. I mean, we won't have any preseason games, so being able to get as much knowledge and information from him as far as what to expect. I mean, it's something that I've been doing a, a ton of. Ken Sterling. Hey, Jonathan. What's the difference between a Wisconsin practice and a Colts practice? Uh, well, definitely one of the biggest things between these two practices is uh, you, re you really got to know, you know where you are, what are you doing, um, because you're rolling. You know, a lot of the times, you know, at, at school, 
you know, it's still college, so you might have some freshmen or some guys who, you know, might not know where, you know, special teams punt individual is or where, you know, the running back individual is. But, you know, here, you know, everything is put in place and laid out before practice so everyone knows where to go so that when practice hits, you're rolling, you're rolling at a high pace, you're playing at a high level, and we're able to get the most out of the two hours, hour 45, however long we're out there, you're able to get the most of it. All right, we'll do two more. Lara Overton. Jonathan, your impressions so far of working with Tom Rathman and how much you can just begin to see the benefit that you have of a coach that brings that level of knowledge and intensity out to practice each day. Oh, I mean, it's spectacular. And especially in the meeting rooms, um, you know, you're going over film, you're evaluating, and then you may hear one or two stories or, you know, coaching points of guys who he's coached previously who've been pro bowlers who are in the hall of fame, you know, and you hear stories about, you know, him playing um, and the guys that he played with. So being able to, you know, extract that knowledge is, is something that you won't be able to get everywhere in the league and a running back room. And you know, I'm definitely grateful that I'm here to be able to receive that.